18th century ruins are the childhood home and birthplace of England's shortest reigning monarch, who only survived nine days in the job. Who were they and where did they live? Find out in just a moment. It's a back to nature venture for today's house buying duo. And there are some pleasant surprises both inside the properties. I've lived in smaller houses than this place. It's true, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And more to amaze outside, too. Oh, awesome. This is brilliant. And look it's at the tree. Absolutely fabulous. Today we're in Leicestershire, and these are the ruins of Bradgate House, the childhood home of Lady Jane Grey, otherwise known as the Nine Day Queen. Her accession to the throne in 1553 was the result of noblemen supporting the Protestant cause, but it didn't last very long because of an upswing of support for the Catholic Mary Tudor, who had Jane's head cut off, aged just 17. Bradgate House and its estate stayed with the Grey family until the 1920s when it was turned into a country park, the largest in Leicestershire, and one of the county's crowning glories. So let's talk about property prices here in Leicestershire. It's actually a great place to be buying a house because, on average, the prices here are 12% less than the national figure. A detached house here is £224,000. But of course, as with all of these counties, there's regional shading. We're concentrating more on the rural eastern half of the county. And even there, there's differences. Down south, around Market Harbour, which has excellent high-speed links down into London. It's a bit more pricey, but you've got beautiful villages like the Langtons and also Hallerton. Whereas further north, around the Walds and Melton Mulberry, you've got this beautiful rolling countryside. So which of these areas are going to appeal to our buyers today? Let's meet them. Prompted by the prospect of a job relocation, lifelong Reading resident and firefighter Stefan, along with his wife Ruth, are completely sold on rural life after a year's dry run renting a cottage in an East Berkshire village. We decided to do a little experiment and to dip our toe in the water, so to speak, and try out the countryside for size before we invested in, um, you know, a property properly in the countryside and have loved it and you know we we don't want to go back to reading now we do want to move on and and uh, try and get our own place yeah, somewhere put down some permanent roots yeah the main motivation for this move is the desire to give their children a closer affinity with the natural world we've got two children ollie's eight and jessica's five they're particularly excited about moving to the country somewhere where they can have a tree house in the garden. We spend quite a bit of time out in our garden or we may walk home from school. It might take us an hour and a half to get home because we spend time playing on the way. And I'd like to uh, be able to replicate that where we move to and um, to be able to get out there and make those mud pies and little fairy houses before it's too late because it's a little moment in time that you've got with your children when they're small and to capture that magic and instill this love of nature is is really vital. They're also hoping this move out to the east of the country will provide lots of new recreational opportunities. As a family, we're all keen cyclists. I love to be out on my bikes and a large proportion of my money is spent on acquiring or maintaining the bikes. And the, the roads up there and the rolling hills and the countryside, I just thought I could spend hours out here on these roads and be perfectly happy. And they want that rural freedom right on their doorstep. It's really important that we find somewhere where we can walk out of our house and find some woods where we can take our children and just let them play and be together yeah, as a family and, in our we space. We do try, yeah, at the weekend, is to leave the cars. Yeah. And if we can, not use the cars. And we feel that it's a real achievement if the cars haven't moved in the weekend and we have a full weekend, but the cars haven't moved. And that, that's, quite a, that's quite satisfying if we've managed to do that. Top priority may be the outdoors, but they do have a couple of considerations for the bricks and mortar too. For this house that we're looking for, we want it to be the house that the, the children grow up in. And whether it be a period property or a more modern build, um, we're, we don't really mind. Their central Reading house is currently on the market, so all that remains is to figure out their finances. The budget for this move is £375,000. Ruth and Steph's son is soon to start studying music at school in Cambridgeshire, so good access by car is essential. So we'll be focusing our house search on the lovely villages in the east of Leicestershire. And we're meeting up in the county to find out more about their family's impending move. Hello, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Leicestershire. It was a bit rainy outside, so I thought we'd meet inside to spare our sort of uh, 
clothes. Can we appreciate that? <laughs> so why Leicestershire? Why are you moving here? Well, I've got myself a new job working for Leicestershire Fire and Rescue. Mm. So now we're going to we're going to move up and experience life in Leicestershire. We've had a little drive round and we've been really happy with lots of the areas that we've seen. Um, so I'm just really excited. I think it's a new adventure, new beginnings for us. Very positive. Uh, in terms of the house itself, what are you looking for? What's the spec for the building? First of all, we'd like it to have four bedrooms. At the moment, we live down south and our, our family, when they come down to visit, they, they all live up north and they like to stay at least two, two nights. If we were to find the perfect house with three bedrooms, I think that it wouldn't matter too much as long as there was a reception room downstairs, perhaps a study or something that we could actually give over to our guests to have their own space. What about the location? Are you, are you looking to be out in the sticks or more in the centre of a village? Sometimes, we, I mean, the moment we drive to school, we have to drive to the shops to pick up our essentials, and if we could avoid doing that, then that would be great, and if we could combine that with, with rural living or village life, then that would be perfect. What about the money side of things? How's the house sale in Reading going? Well, uh, that's sold oh. as of relatively recently, and that sale is progressing Thank through you. now. Um, so, yeah, that's the, the first piece of the jigsaw in place, and it puts us in a, quite a strong buying position, I think. It certainly does. Well, good. That's, I think, all the relevant facts. We have three lovely houses, and it is a beautiful part of the countryside, much underrated, I think. I think so. And I'm um, looking forward to see what you think of them. Great. Excellent. Yeah, we're excited. So, for a revised budget of £380,000, they're after a house with its own unique personality that has the potential for four bedrooms and a secure garden with enough space for a tree house. Lastly, they'd like to be within walking distance of essential amenities as well as a good primary school. Rather unusually, our buyers haven't got an exacting list of house requirements, so we've chosen a varied range of beautiful property styles, at least one of which I hope will meet the mark. But as always, the price will be a guessing game. Then, to top things off, we've got the mystery property, which will pit house against garden. You're both very outdoors yet. Is it true that you're an iron man, Steph? Uh, I've Yes. I've, uh, Ruth calls it my, my midlife crisis, but I've taken up, taken up triathlon. So are you planning to use the countryside to train for that? I mean, when, when we've been out driving around Leicestershire, I'm always looking at the road conditions, just seeing what the tarmac's like. This is interesting. I'm not sure I've ever considered the tarmac <laughs> on this show before. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's a whole new criteria of house buying. We're kicking off the house search in the village of Hallerton, which is about an hour and 15 minutes drive from Cambridge. Surrounded by gorgeous countryside in the Welland Valley, Hallerton lies in the midst of beautiful walking and cycling territory. This is a much sought after place to live with a small, well-regarded primary school. Much of the attractive architecture is constructed from ironstone and limestone quarried in this eastern part of the county. The village also has a shop within the local tea rooms, a couple of pubs, and a very active community with a rather unusual, centuries-old annual event. So I have brought you to Hallerton, which is an amazing traditional English village, as you can see. And this, <coughs> believe it or not, is a <laughs> bottle. Because Hallerton's famous for the bottle-kicking competition, which happens every Easter Monday between Hallerton and Medbourne, which is the local okay. village. It's one of those brutal... English <laughs> things. It's quite heavy. <laughs> Have a feel. It's not light. And it all takes place on the ridge up there, which is called um, Hare Pie Hill. And basically, like, it's a massive scrum. Thousands of people come wow. and they scrum from all, all day. What do you feel about the sort of a kind of country cottagey sort of village like this? It's lovely. It's really lovely. It is lovely. It's picture yeah. postcard stuff, this, isn't yeah. it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to find the house very interesting. Follow me. Okay. Excellent. And our first property is a Grade Two listed cottage right in the centre of the village. Very nice. So, several things you'll have noticed. It's attached. Yeah. It's part yes. of the terrace, but it's a Georgian terrace. Right. From the 1790s, 
I think it's a beautiful property, but I think it's going to be a good one for you to sort of for me to get my bearings about what you're looking for. Okay. First impressions? Well, it's clearly a, a terrace property, which is something that we've 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 not considered. So I'll be intrigued to see if uh, inside it gives us the space that we that we want. Mm -hmm. Looking in through the window, it looks really really lovely. I can't wait to get inside. I am worried that there might not be a garden there. I think it might be a courtyard. Let's hope. Let's look inside. <laughs> This is a beautifully appointed and deceptively spacious cottage with more than enough room for a baby grand piano in the entrance hall. That's got to be an immediate plus point for Steph and Ruth's musically minded son. Come into the sitting room. You get a feel for the period of that property because this is a lovely Georgian space. It's really nice, very light. Yes, I'm loving the big window. That was a fantastic view. Yeah. yeah, it's got the lovely Georgian casement windows, yeah. a nice little sort of butler's kind of cupboard. I could definitely see, you know, us sitting in here as a family and, and feeling really quite chilled because the view's just really nice. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's not too small a space. Yeah. Well, the kitchen area is a bit more modern. OK. Yeah. We're interested to see what you think about this. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, this is yeah. huge. Yeah. So there's a bit more space here. Yes. Yeah. This I is a beautiful. Could, yeah. One. yeah. I could definitely see us in here. It's a lovely space. It's a really um, super family area. I love the uh, window seat. Oh, that's something um, I had when I was a little girl, and I'd I'd love to have that again. I believe that's a thumbs up for downstairs, which also houses a huge shower room with enough space to hide away all the white goods. Upstairs, there's another smart and stylish bathroom this time with a roll-top bath, which serves all of the bedrooms. But we have just three to choose from here, one of which is a petite single room. Mind your head. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, uh, the biggest room, the master bedroom. The lovely uh, light from the north and the south. And you can see the rafters of the original cottage. There's some history in those rafters. Definitely. Well, where are we going to put the children? Let's have a look. So the other side of the landing, we've got this room. It's another good size room. It's beautiful. I love this room, and uh, I love the uh, the master bedroom. I think they're, they're they're fantastic room. Big windows, lovely views out over the over the village and the countryside. If we had one child, it would be very very easy. Um, with two children and visitors, it's becoming a little bit com more complicated. We've hit a potentially thorny issue with the lack of bedroom space upstairs, but I think I've got just the thing to win them back over outside. Off the kitchen stroke family room and immediately to the rear of the property is a private paved patio beyond which is a real hidden gem. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely, it's like a little surprise. It's a complete secret. Wow. <laughs> oh, awesome. This is brilliant. And look it's at the absolutely tree. fabulous. And there's yes. your tree for your tree house. Yay. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It's a, it's a really lovely surprise. It is, it is yeah. a proper secret garden. Yeah. I can well, imagine I our girl who would love it. it very much, Particularly very much. Blossom, yeah, she would. She'd stand under that well. and dance. I'm, really. I can tell you now, she'd be so thrilled with that. Oh, yeah. that is lovely to hear. Yeah. Let's talk money. How much do you think this is on the market for? I'm thinking about three seven five. I'm going to go for three eighty. Well, in this case, you should listen to your wife because she's exactly right. It is on the market for £375,000. So why don't you go in and have a look? Okay. And I'll meet you out the front. Great. By the clink. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Just under their top budget and on the market for £375,000, the first in our selection is a late 18th century terraced home at the hub of a lively village. The property comes with a huge open plan kitchen and family room, three bedrooms, and a secure secret garden. When we went through to the uh, kitchen, it was really a wow room because it's just huge and it's really the heart of the home. Uh, having the lovely sort of neutral units and the, and the marble top and the Belfast sink and the lovely range cooker was just, you know, really nice to see. Even though the house isn't in the middle of nowhere, the village is in the middle of nowhere. And that was, that's, that's nice. It's really lovely because we do want to be involved in the community. The downstairs of the property is just amazing it's uh, it's a fantastic living space it does help us to see beyond uh, the fact that there are only three bedrooms and one of them is very small when we were in the garden you could hear birds singing 
children playing and that's it, nothing else and that, that kind of peace and quiet and tranquility we would value a lot. It was a bit of a gamble this because it's a terrace and it's got these three bedrooms but it's such a beautiful village, I had to show them. Good thoughts? We really like it. Oh, that's what we like to hear but we do have another house lined up, follow me. Aiming to link the ancient forests of Charnwood in northern Leicestershire with Needlewood in Staffordshire, the National Forest is a flourishing woodland in the making that's not only transforming one of the country's least wooded regions, but also increasing recreation facilities and creating jobs. As Ruth and Steph are so keen to reconnect with the natural world, we sent them to meet the aptly named Peter Wood, who's been running Greenwood craft workshops under the cover of this fledgling forest for 18 years. Hi. 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 Nice to meet you, Steph. Nice. Hi, Steph. OK, Peter, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about how the, the National Forest came about. Uh, it, it, it's quite a nice success story, really. The government wanted to encourage woodland planting um, in an area where there wasn't much woodland cover. And in the Midlands, um, this area was chosen. It straddles Derbyshire, Leicestershire and Staffordshire, about 200 square miles. And they've gone from about 3% um, woodland cover to about 18 19%. So it's a real significant landscape change. Using simple hand tools, green woodworking is wholly man-powered, done without modern machinery, and courses here range from willow weaving to stool making. Today, Ruth and Steph are going to try their hand at some of the traditional techniques involved in creating a Windsor armchair. I'll get you started, and let's get that hand, rest it like that. Push up and down. I only pull it off just a little bit. That's it, but you can push up and down a lot. There you go, that's good. Now, you ready? You're on your own. <laughs> oh! <laughs> The chair legs and spindles are turned on a pole lathe using ash, which is a strong and flexible wood. That's good, yeah. Did you hear that, Ruth? I got it, that's good. Next is an attempt at steam bending, a low energy and ecological method of manipulating the wood without the need for toxic glues. Peter, tell me about this amazing contraption you've got here. OK, this, this, this is our steam box and this is where we're steaming the wood. This is going to produce the arm for the back of the chair. It, it's a great way and a nice easy way of bending wood. After an hour in the steam chamber, the length of timber is removed and straight away the wood is curved and clamped into the desired shape. OK, and now okay. pull it round. OK, slowly but surely, slowly but surely. And then just hold it there. I'm going to come round. It is hot. <laughs> it is hot. OK. Naturals. <laughs> wow. That's just perfect. It probably takes quite a while to make a chair. <laughs> How it's, long does it take, roughly? Can you do it in an hour? <laughs> you, can't, you can't do a chair in an hour. We, we yeah. do a nice thing. A weekend, you make a stool. But for a nice big chair, yeah. you're looking on a five or a seven day course. Yeah. The National Forest will certainly have outdoor offshoots for Ruth and Steph to enjoy, but now it's time to get off the beaten track and back onto the property path as we continue with our house hunt. Our next destination takes us further north into the county to the village of Goadby Marwood. Just a few miles from the Vale of Beaver, Goadby Marwood is a quiet rural village. Much of the architecture here is built from locally mined ironstone, including buildings that date back to the early 1600s. But parts of the local church have origins in the 13th century. And the second house is in the middle of the village, just off a quiet no-through road. Round the post, here we have house number two. Oh, wow. Very cute. It is. <laughs> So we're getting slightly more detached as we go along, so this one's obviously <laughs> semi-detached. Clear on one side. Uh -huh. Originally it would have been two little cottages from the 1850s. It's been extensively expanded, but it's in the lovely ironstone that's so common mm -hmm. to this part of the world. I love the colour of the stone, it really is yes. pretty. Yeah, I'm liking the fact that it's got a garage, it's got off-road parking, yes. yeah. and plenty of space. It's a nice property. Let's look inside. Okay. 
Now, our first property earlier today, beautiful though it was, seemed to lack the sleeping quarters our buyers desire. So with this second house, we're giving them more options in an altogether different design. Come on in, straight into the, the living space. Oh, yes. It's lovely. It is. It is, it's lovely. Come on. So much to take in. It's there just... is. It is a much more kind of open plan. It is. Uh -huh. yeah. Obviously, a slightly um, younger building, but also because they've knocked through quite a lot. I'm loving the brick there. I really like that. Mm. Yeah, that um, would have been the outside wall of the original yeah, cottage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get the sunlight in these big, lovely bow windows. Yes. <laughs> Shall we move on through into the kitchen sure. and have a look? It's a much more modern space than the last house. It is. That's a nice kitchen. There's lots of uh, cupboards in here. I like the window as well, that you can uh, see through, what, um, watch the children while you're cooking dinner. And I like the stable door. Yes, nice to have a stable door. Yeah. And also, this is west, uh, sorry, east facing, so you get the morning sunshine oh, here. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, they've got two kids as well, so they, they eat most of their meals in here. I like that. Shall we go and have a look at the other rooms? Yes. There are four rooms in total down on the ground floor, including a separate dining room and one more reception that's currently designated as a playroom. I just wanted to show you this little room quickly because I think this might be a good fourth bedroom. Guest room? Yeah, no, I, I, see, where you, I see where you're going with that. Mm. And then, then when the guests aren't here, it's a nice little playroom for the kids. Yeah. Fantastic. It's a super space. It is. Let's peek at the bedrooms proper. OK. Upstairs, alongside a four-piece family bathroom, lie the remaining bedrooms, and there are three to choose from, ideally suited for their family of four. As I mentioned, three bedrooms upstairs, but these ones are all good size. This is the master. It's lovely. Lots of light. Built-in storage. Yeah, yeah, that's fab. Lots of it. Yeah. Well, actually, the nice thing about this property is there are lots of nooks and crannies. Indeed. Lots of outbuildings. So let's go outside. Hey. Outside, the detached single garage we saw earlier has been divided up into useful storage space and a fully kitted office. Then the enclosed garden is mainly laid to lawn, bordered by mature shrubs. So what do you think of this garden? I love the magnolia bush. Jessica and I have promised each other that that's something we're going to do together in our next house, is to plant one, but there's one already here, <gasps> so that was the first thing that attracted my attention. So you have to buy the house now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a sign. <laughs> so now you've got an overview of the property, what do you think's the price tag? I'm jumping in at 360. Can I fix you to a figure? OK, 365. 365? Mm -hmm. 360. Okay. You're both completely wrong. This is on the market for 295. Wow. Oh my word. <laughs> You're joking. That's so, a, a I'm, lovely I'm house for that amount. Yeah. yeah, really lovely. Wow. Now, like, why don't you explore? Because there's okay. the you know, various bits and nooks and crannies that we haven't looked at yeah. to get the proper overview. Okay. And then when you're done, we'll meet out the front. Great. Scratch our heads and see what happens next. Cool. Fantastic. Come Thank on you. In you go. <laughs> A sizeable £85,000 under budget, with a guide price of £295,000, our second property is an extended, semi-detached cottage dating back to the 1850s. It has three reception rooms, a large kitchen diner, three bedrooms, and a well-maintained enclosed garden. So this is the... This is the, the smallest, smallest room, yeah. So this could be... Be perfect could be for just, Jess, yeah. She would love that she would the previous property there would have been discussions in inverted commas about who had which bedroom up here there wouldn't be at all the, the bigger bedroom would be perfect for my son the smaller bedroom my daughter would love it and it's already pink so um that's uh, the battle would be won before it even started the living space downstairs is really good good workable space in terms of a dining room for more formal occasions and then the little snug sort of playroom area great for the children but you could use that uh, as a guest room as well so yeah it was working well and i could see ways that you know we could uh, bring our lives into here so that was good as an all-round package it is working for us so if you pull the door behind you because we are done for the day yay both properties inspected time for rest and relaxation It 
it's day two of our property search here in Leicestershire, and on a budget of £380,000, we're helping Ruth and Steph find the perfect family home in the countryside. Now they've sold up their urban house in Reading. And still to come, a spot of five-star splendour in the mystery house. I'd feel like I was living in a luxury hotel every night coming in here. And I'll be learning how loyal Leicestershire residents are protecting their lengthy food-producing legacy. The weather gods are smiling on us here in Leicestershire for our mystery house tour with Steph and Ruth. And I think they liked the properties yesterday, but they might have been a little bit small in terms of giving them the bedrooms and the garden that they wanted. So the mystery house, now usually mystery houses give them something that they don't really ask for, something unusual. And in this instance, the mystery house is actually giving them everything on their wish list, but in a very quirky way. Best of you have a look. What would you like the mystery house to be? We've seen two fantastic gardens, so you've, it's, they've been right on the money with the outside spaces that we've wanted and the storage that we've needed. Um, and the rurality. Yes. Perfect. Uh, rurality, had... that's a good word. I might have to borrow that. <laughs> <laughs> I might use that in every show. Countrynicity. Countrynicity <laughs> and the rurality of this property. <laughs> Our final property stop is back down to southern Leicestershire, where we're heading for Dunton Bassett. A small rural village surrounded by beautiful countryside, residents of Dunton Bassett benefit from a couple of pubs, a newsagent with post office, and a good primary school. And in the spirit of countrynicity, we're approaching the mystery house by the back. Which one is it? Which one is it? Which one is it? Oh, I have no idea. Here we have it. So this is an unusual property because, as you can see, it's a courtyard property. But the one I want to show you is the king of them, the original farmhouse, this one in the corner. Wow. <laughs> All of it. All of it? All of it. Oh, wow. Goodness. That is huge. So we brought you here because we wanted to give you all the space you need. OK. What are your thoughts about it? That is massive, isn't it? Fantastic. I think it looks amazing. I can't I'm wait to look inside, inside it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to showing you. Come with me. To access the mystery house, we're going round to the front door. Right in the heart of the village, this is a Grade Two listed farmhouse with roots in the mid-16th century, but it's had a thoroughly modern makeover. Come in to... <gasps> oh. My word, this okay. amazing oh, my word. kitchen dining room. <sighs> wow. I nearly cried then. <laughs> oh, go on. That's amazing. <laughs> Give me some tears. That yes. is unbelievable. What do you think? Yes, it's fantastic. The couple who live here have done an amazing job. Oak work surfaces throughout have been beautifully done. Yeah. yeah. And then this room is really interesting work because this is the oldest part of the house. This would have been the old farmhouse. Wow. Um, back to the 16th century. You've got the original kind of cross beam, which would have probably come from a ship. And they've stripped it back and turned it into a lovely dining room. It's amazing. You Just pulled it out of the bag. Gorgeous. Well, it's a big house, so I'll let you explore a bit later mm -hmm. on, but let's go and look at the oldest part. That probably would have been, I don't know, I'm not sure, been the dairy or something, but this is obviously the kitchen, because you've got this great big old well, range, I suppose, and then a bread oven in this... Part here. Wow. Yeah, That's a fantastic room. There's yeah. some history in here. It's got loads of character, this room. I just look at the oven. You can just imagine the family that lived here and how busy the farmer's wife would have been making food for everybody, using that was probably open and shut all day and putting loads of fuel on the fire. So, yeah, awesome. Loads of history. Beyond this study is the perfect hideaway for fitness fanatic Steph, as the garage has been turned into a gym. Then beyond that is the utility and storage room. The layout of this property takes the shape of an L with the converted garage and utility to the far side of one wing. But we're going to make our way back through the dining room and kitchen towards the entrance hall and over to the other wing where there are another two reception rooms. I guess this is the, the posh wing because it's got carpet. <laughs> It's lovely, really, really tranquil. It is. Beautifully done. It is really beautiful. Nice. You have not one but two sitting rooms. It could be your summer sitting room and your winter sitting room, for example. OK. Well, one of the reasons we brought you here was because we haven't really managed to give you the bedrooms in any of the other properties. But in this one, oh, boy, have we <laughs> given you bedrooms. The stairs back in the hallway lead up to the bounty of bedrooms. 
In the more modern part above the sitting rooms, there's a family bathroom and three bedrooms, all of which are really generously sized, with plenty of space to accommodate Ruth and Steph's two children, as well as visiting family and friends. And that just leaves the far wing, all of which has been dedicated to the master suite. Mind your heads, but I wanted to show you this room to see your reaction. Wow. Wow. Huh. That's amazing. This, this is a room and a half. <laughs> and it wow. really is mm. a master bedroom. It's beautiful. Big and spacious and very light. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. That's great. Does it fit the bill? Without a doubt. Yeah. I feel like I was living in a luxury hotel every night coming in here. One disappointment is that the ensuite's a bit small. Yeah, I'm sensing <laughs> sarcasm. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, it just gets oh my better. God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, this is amazing. I've lived in smaller houses than this place. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely, yes. <laughs> Let's go outside. You can explore upstairs later on. After you. Oh, OK. There's no doubt that the house itself more than meets our buyer's criteria, but the compromise of this mystery package is outside in the garden, which is the smallest of all our three properties. What do you think about having a garden this size? And, I mean, it's obviously a bit exposed. Yeah. Well... To be honest, we like the house so much that it actually didn't become an issue. It's a nice, manageable space. Yes. Well, it's a big property. What do you think it's on the market for? I think it might be a little over our budget. Um, perhaps around 389. Right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to go a bit lower, so I'm going to go in at 369. 369. Well, you're right in this sense that the property is over budget, I'm afraid. So brace yourself. It's on the market for £400,000. But don't despair, because we've been talking to the owners and they are open to negotiation. They could possibly come down to 380, but there is nothing you need to do to this mm -hmm. house. There's lots more to see inside, not, not least your man cave. My man cave. Other bedrooms. <laughs> Take your pick. In you go. Brilliant. Thank you. What a mystery. That is such a good mystery, because it's a bit risky, a bit quirky here, but I think we might have pulled off a winner. On the market for £400,000, the listed mystery property may be over budget, but it's also overflowing with features that include a large farmhouse kitchen, through to a separate dining room, a further three reception rooms, and four spacious bedrooms, one of which is a rather sumptuous master ensuite. Wow. Another oh. big room. <laughs> <laughs> no room, it's a full on gym. It's great. You'd be well at home here, wouldn't you? It kind of blew us away, really, to realise that actually it's twice the size of the frontage that you can see from the main road. It took my breath away, really. It's huge. The ensuite off the, off the back of the master bedroom is something else, really. I've never seen anything like it. It's a functional garden. There's, there's space. We could enjoy that and we would make it work because the house gives so much. As soon as we walked inside the house and saw the kitchen, it was just like, oh my word, this is amazing. And uh, I was actually really emotional um, because it was just so beautiful. For me, the garden feels a little bit small. Um, I had hoped for, for something better uh, in terms of size and a little bit more character. Um, they have tried to work with the space that they've got and they've made the best use of that. And, um, you know, it's certainly uh, pretty what is there of it. OK, guys, that's the mystery house. In fact, that's all our property's done. Time for you to have a little rest and think. Okay. Head off to the car, I'll meet you there. And you at home can take a look at some of the other properties here in Leicestershire, above and below Ruth and Steph's budget. And we're starting with this two-bedroom brick-built barn conversion in Hallerton. On the market for £285,000, this detached property is a first-class renovation featuring a handmade, bespoke farmhouse kitchen. Or how about this absolutely enchanting 17th century ironstone semi in Bilsden, with a unique curved thatch that gives the place a really homely feel. It comes with a price ticket of £450,000, and of its three bedrooms, one is a very pleasant double aspect room with cosy country cottage decor. 
Bilston is also the setting for this detached four-bed home that has a guide price of £510,000. This sprawling property again started life as a barn, and as such, its main highlight has to be a terrific double-height kitchen diner. A high concentration of the Leicestershire landscape is dedicated to farmland, and in the northern portion of the county, the small town of Melton Mowbray has completely turned around its fortunes by capitalising on its food-producing heritage. Today I'm meeting Melton councillor and champion for the town, Matthew O'Callaghan, to find out how this area has transformed itself into the UK's rural capital of food. Matthew, we're sitting in a very bustling Melton now, but let's spin back the clock. What was this like back in the 90s? Going through a rough time. About 97, we'd got the Astrid B mine closed, we'd got the Army Abro Depot closed, and we'd also had the effects of mad cow disease on the cattle market and on the agricultural infrastructure. What, what did you decide to do? What did the, the town decide to do? I think myself and a group of other people decided we'd have to do something about it. And we looked at, you know, what could we do as a town and what's unique about the town. And of course, obviously, it's our food heritage. It's Stilton cheese, it's Melton Moby pork pies, and we decided to focus on that and use that, really, to regenerate the town. We get generate about £65 million worth of tourism uh, in terms of food. Two million visitors come to the borough a year on food tourism. That's as many people visit Cyprus, by the way. The first step of Melton's food resurrection was a campaign to protect and preserve the town's world-famous pork pies. Produced here since the 18th century, in 2009, the pies were granted protected geographical status, meaning only those made locally can bear the name Melton Mowbray. Stephen Hallen runs the town's oldest pork pie bakery, and he too was a key player in protecting the integrity of the town's native foods. Stephen, this is a great busy shop you have here. Well, heart of Melton. Heart of Melton, yes. Yeah, you are the image of Melton around the world. The same image says a thousand words, doesn't it? So what does the pie say? Oh, how long have we got? When you actually buy a pie, or Stilton or Red Leicester for that matter, from, from here in the town, you're coming to its heartland. And, and you're taking away a story. You, you've been there, you've done that. It, it almost tastes better, <laughs> but the feeling is better. And, and uh, it's a cultural thing, really. Eating should be pleasurable, should be enjoyable. And at last, that is changing here in Britain. To complete my Melton odyssey, I'm going to see cheese specialist Tim Brown, a regular at Melton's ancient farmer's market that's been a feature of the town for over a thousand years. Now, this is a very cheese-rich area, isn't it? What are your sort of best-selling brands? Well, our heritage in this part of the world and has been for the last 300 years, of course, is Stilton, is the, the primary driver. There are five dairies that produce Stilton, and that accounts for a third of our sales. It's very important to us. And, of course, it can only be made in the three counties of Leicestershire, Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire. Do you think there's been a cheese renaissance? There certainly has. The price of milk really is driven by the major buyers and farmers have had a very poor return on their milk prices. So many of them have now started to turn to adding value to their milk. And so they're producing either yoghurt or cheese, uh, ice cream, uh, to get that extra value. So the, me the message that's coming through Land Clear all the time is like if people get together and sort of combine their strength, then it, it's a real kind of bulwark against all these kind of rural areas sort of getting washed away by sort of the forces of the market. I'm sure. It's like when you work together, uh, you don't become competitors. You become, what, companions almost, really, and I think that's... Uh, uh, you're part of the Melton team. I've had a chance to explore the area, and so too have our buyers. So it's about time we find out which of our three very different properties they like the best. I think the mystery house might be a good bet, but I'm not sure about house number one or two. My money could be on house number two, simply because it's got the space that they need, but I'm not sure and I'm often wrong. So let's find out. Hello, guys. Long day. Mm. Um, let's talk about the properties. I got the impression that the mystery house was a bit of a winner. Is that fair to say? I think you might be right. Definitely. Good, good. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but I was a little bit unsure about, you know, who might be a contender out of the other two. Any clues about that? I think the, the, the house that we saw at uh, second, I think we've discounted that one because it's too far for Ruth to travel. 
um, the amount of time that we, we are going to have to spend travelling to and from Cambridge. It was a lovely house and the price was very attractive and if we could have moved it 15 miles further east then we'd be able to consider it. Does that mean house number one was a contender? Downstairs was fantastic and we really liked it but the problem with the third bedroom being so tiny, it is surmountable but we're just not sure whether or not we, you know, we may have liked another house more. Mm. So clearly you're referring to the mystery house there. I mean, what, what's the situation with the, you know, what happens next? I mean, can you proceed? I mean, would you be interested in putting an offer in? Yes, well, we'd like to go back and visit again, wouldn't Without we? doubt. Go back, have a look, maybe take the kids so they can have a look. They're very good judges of a house and they'll very quickly identify which bedroom they want, although I don't think that will be very difficult for them. And that would make us very happy if they feel comfortable in that space as well. Yeah, yeah and possibly make an offer um, after a second visit. Well, I know that time is pressing, your job starts soon, and your house is sold. It's lovely that we found one that really kind of struck a chord. Mm, oh, we definitely. appreciate your help. It's we been do. great. Best Thank of luck. You. Thank you. Well, it looks like our mystery house may be a winner, though I think that Ollie and Jessica will have a very important deciding vote to cast. They're the part of the house buying process we haven't been privy to. Still, I think our work here in Leicestershire may be done. Join us next time for more Escape to the Country. On reflection, Steph and Ruth decided that the garden of the mystery house wasn't ideal for their family. So the search for their perfect Leicestershire home continues. If you'd like to escape to the country in Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England or further afield to the continent and need our help, please apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash be on a show. 18th century ruins are the childhood home and birthplace of England's shortest reigning monarch who only survived nine days in the job. Who were they and where did they live? Find out in just a moment. It's a back to nature venture for today's house buying duo and there are some pleasant surprises both inside the properties. I've lived in smaller houses than this place. It's true, isn't it? <laughs> And more to amaze outside, too. Oh, awesome. This is brilliant. I love it's the absolutely tree. fabulous. Today we're in Leicestershire, and these are the ruins of Bradgate House, the childhood home of Lady Jane Grey, otherwise known as the Nine Day Queen. Her accession to the throne in 1553 was the result of noblemen supporting the Protestant cause, but it didn't last very long because of an upswing of support for the Catholic Mary Tudor, who had Jane's head cut off, aged just 17. Bradgate House and its estate stayed with the Grey family until the 1920s when it was turned into a country park, the largest in Leicestershire, and one of the county's crowning glories. So let's talk about property prices here in Leicestershire. It's actually a great place to be buying a house because, on average, the prices here are 12% less than the national figure. A detached house here is £224,000. But of course, as with all of these counties, there's regional shading. We're concentrating more on the rural eastern half of the county. And even there, there's differences. Down south around Market Harbour, which has excellent high-speed links down into London. It's a bit more pricey, but you've got beautiful villages like the Langtons and also Hallerton. Whereas further north around the Walds and Melton Mulberry, you've got this beautiful rolling countryside. So which of these areas are going to appeal to our buyers today? Let's meet them. Prompted by the prospect of a job relocation, lifelong Reading resident and firefighter Stefan, along with his wife Ruth, are completely sold on rural life after a year's dry run renting a cottage in an East Berkshire village. We decided to do a little experiment and to dip our toe in the water, so to speak, and try out the countryside for size before we invested in, um, you know, a property properly in the countryside and have loved it and you know we we don't want to go back to Reading now we do want to move on and, and uh, try and get our own place yeah, somewhere. Put down some permanent routes. Yeah. The main motivation for this move is the desire to give their children a closer affinity with the natural world. 
We've got two children, Ollie's eight and Jessica's five. They're particularly excited about moving to the country somewhere where they can have a tree house in the garden. We spend quite a bit of time out in our garden or we may walk home from school. It might take us an hour and a half to get home because we spend time playing on the way. And I'd like to uh, be able to replicate that where we move to and um, to be able to get out there and make those mud pies and little fairy houses before it's too late because it's a little moment in time that you've got with your children when they're small and to capture that magic and instill this love of nature is, is really vital. They're also hoping this move out to the east of the country will provide lots of new recreational opportunities. As a family, we're all keen cyclists. I love to be out on my bikes and a large proportion of my money is spent on acquiring or maintaining the bikes. And the, the roads up there and the rolling hills and the countryside, I just thought I could spend hours out here on these roads and be perfectly happy. And they want that rural freedom right on their doorstep. It's really important that we find somewhere where we can walk out of our house and find some woods where we can take our children and just let them play and be together as a family and, in our we space. We do try, yeah, at the weekend, is to leave the cars. Yeah. And if we can, not use the cars. And we feel that we've, it's a real achievement if the cars haven't moved in the weekend and we've had a whole full weekend, but the cars haven't moved. And that, that's, quite a, that's quite satisfying if we've managed to do that. Top priority may be the outdoors, but they do have a couple of considerations for the bricks and mortar too.